We got a really cool thing to share with you today. But before I get started, intros real quick. Again, my name is Steve, I'm in front of the camera. Chelsea's behind. Good morning, everybody. And we're so happy you're with us today for Zoo Adventures. We're gonna take you on a little tour today. Remember we mentioned this, we're gonna do a few of these. Just kind of show you around the park a little bit. Um, it is a little cold, it is wintertime. Not everybody wants to come to the zoo in the wintertime. We thought, you know what? We are open. We're not sleeping or hibernating or anything. So we thought we'd still show you, bring you the zoo, at least some parts of it. So I'm gonna show you an entrance. Chelsea, when you come around here and kind of cool little poem down there, I love that they've got, they got the kind of poetry all over the park. If you keep your eyes open, you'll find it. But today, we're here. We're going to the Streamside Habitat. We have two buildings to share with you and one animal in the middle. I think you're really going to enjoy today's episode. So before you get take much time, let's get started. Ha! Hey guys, so we're going to take you on a tour of Streamside. We didn't realize we'd get here right when Keeper Alley is throwing some food to the fish. Completely unplanned, I promise you on that. Um, but it's kind of neat. Remember, we're taking you on a little tour, so we thought it'd be kind of fun to share uh, just the entire Streamside experience with you. Streamside is closed. Today is, looks like December 16th on my watch. Um, so on this day, Streamside is still closed, so we said, you know what? Let's take our digital guests through all of Streamside to be able to share with you this habitat, these habitats, because it's a really neat space. It is a lot of the native animals in North Carolina. And here Chelsea's getting some really good shots of a lot of different fish. There's chubs and shiners, all kinds of things. And we're gonna take you from what we call the South Building, the building closer to the North American entrance, to the North Building, the building that's furthest away. So this would kind of be the first habitat you would come to when you're visiting the zoo, coming from like the kids' own play space, the outdoor nature play space, from Garden Friends, from Polar Bear, this would be the first building you would come to. And this first habitat has a lot of fish um, and hellbenders in it. The hellbender, that really amazing large salamander uh, that the zoo has a really cool conservation program with. Chelsea, can you show them the box? Even though the hellbender's not in the box right now, the your North Carolina Zoo team has figured out a design for these boxes, which are really cool for the hellbenders. So on the right-hand side of that box, I'll come over here, I'm behind Chelsea, so I'll come over here and show you. Over here, the animal would enter in. Now this, of course, is cut in half, so you guys can see what it looks like inside. The animal can come in here, and it's a nest box. And it's been designed so silt and other dirt can't get inside there, which is a big challenge for hellbenders these days. Curator Dustin Smith and his team have kind of designed those, created those, some partners are involved with it as well. Um, and they actually install those in streams and creeks where hellbenders are found. That's kind of cool. And right next door to this space is the same thing, right over here. Chelsea going up and over. Just more fish. Believe it or not, that big pile of rocks that you see there, a lot of those were moved by a fish, by one of the chubs. It's a nesting kind of site, so although we had substrate, we had rocks all the way through the space, that silly fish decided to remodel and moved a lot of the rocks to the right. Is that what you find in your house, Chelsea? You find a bunch of rocks and stuff to move around? No, but it would be nice if some fish would come and remodel my house, so I didn't have to do it. <laughs> nice. Good deal. wonder if he's for hire. Ah, he might be. He's got his blue tubules on the top of his head. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be one of the ones that does it. One of the challenges about not having a keeper with us, it's like they know exactly who's who, and I'm going to tell you those are chubs and shiners. <laughs> Some minnows as well. Minnows is a type of fish, not just a small fish all the time. So this is Streamside South. We'll take you to the next habitat down here. And we're just taking on a little tour. This is a taped episode. It's kind of hard to do this live. But we thought, you know what? Since it's closed, let's show everybody what's going on. 
And you guys may have seen these habit, this habitat before recently. We were talking about aquatic species and how they care for them. We had Keeper Atley with us for that one too. Oh yeah, so okay, so thank you very much for that, Chelsea. So no, their eyes don't typically glow. <laughs> there is a light on the camera. Can they cover, I can cover the light? That might be inappropriate, wouldn't it? <laughs> so this is a lot of the game fish, a lot of animals that the, the people's first experience with wild animals outside of birds is oftentimes fish, because they've gone fishing with dad. They've gone fishing with mom. Grandma and grandpa took them fishing. And some of these fish, the bluegill, bass, crappie, these are the first fish that people see and experience. So it's just a neat way to kind of stop and maybe tell that story when, when we went fishing, we caught and found. There are a few larger species of fish in there, the sturgeons. The short-nosed sturgeons in there, a prehistoric looking fish. Are you getting them, Chelsea? I'm going to come behind you again. Yeah, a great shot. And there's also gars in there. Long-nosed gars are in there. Oh, somebody just came right up for us, Chelsea. How about that? Look at you going up and over again. But this is really a neat time to t stop and tell the stories. This habitat has those fish that you've seen when you've gone fishing before. Remembering that, that wonderful time camping that you had as a family when you went out and about. Again, right now, Streamside is closed. The zoo is open, but Streamside Habitat is closed. Again, this is December 16th, so do check to make sure that the, habitat, the Streamside is open or not. Most of, the other facility, most of the other buildings are open. And today, for your zoo adventures, we're taking you on a tour of the Streamside Habitat. We're in Streamside South. The first building you come to when you're coming from the North American entrance from Polar Bear, from Kids Own Nature Play. Our next stop is one of the mammals here. So we're going to cut, come back and show you one of the really cute animals at the North Carolina Zoo. Come along. Chelsea, how'd you get there so quick? We just came out of Streamside South. Now we're in between Streamside South and Streamside North. I ran, Steve. You ran? Yeah, you had to come see your otter, didn't you? Of course. <laughs> the otters are ridiculously cute. So the, this is the, the otter habitat. That's the river otters. He's coming right over. See you guys, digital guests. With the habitat being closed, he's like, people, I'll swim for you people. Show you what it means to be a river otter. We saw these guys. This is an animal that simply deals with winter. We talked about that a while back. Amazing under the water. That beautiful fur that really keeps them nice and warm and dry while swimming through the water. <laughs> Go do a little, little flip for you guys. That's why he's called the clown of the waterways. He's so good in the water. Found in North Carolina, a lot of other places too in uh, the United States. Look how well he swims. And you'll notice that his feet aren't moving until he's walking. The tail is what's pushing him through the water. It's a very powerful, muscular tail that helps push him through the water. And now he's just going to show, he's going to pose for you. How awesome is that? Give the river otter some thumbs up, guys. Give the river otter some thumbs up. Checking you guys out. Those really strong whiskers or vibrissae on his mouth, around his face, helps him detect objects and prey, and sometimes danger in the waterways that they call home. Beautiful coloration, a little kind of counter shading, a little dark on the top, a little lighter on the belly. This is somewhat of an apex predator, even though it's not the biggest predator. In a lot of the places where you'll find them, this is the number one hunter in some of the waterways. The river otter. Well, that was kind of fun. How cool is that? I still don't know how you got up here so fast. We have another place to go. So I know you like this next animal, so don't get there this quack, that quick this time. I'll do my best. Thank you. But I'm excited. You are. Steve, wait. Wait, what are you doing back, Chelsea? Steve. What? What are you showing them? Things along the path that you're just passing right over. Yeah? 
Yeah. What'd we've, you catch? We've got some cool flowers and stuff planted. Does that say rare plant species? It does. On the little wow. green leaf there. That's cool. And there's, there's, they're all over the place. Wait, there are a couple more, aren't there? Yeah, there are. Let's show I'm, them this. I'm super excited for our next animal, but I also love plants too. Oh, so. okay. So that's another one, the Schweinwinz's sunflower? Say that five times back. No, I can barely say it once. <laughs> Michoux's sumac? Sure. Michoux's, Michoux's? Sure, why not? Not, plants aren't my thing. If it doesn't move, I'm not as good. There's one more over here. Do you see this one? I can say that one. Large witch alder. Good, good job. That one's easy. Thanks. That's a great catch, Chelsea. That and those and those plants are along the walkway between Streamside South and Streamside North. So when you guys are coming, we know you want to see the animals, but take your time and look around. You might be surprised some of the sights you can find. All right, Steve. Ready? Are, are you ready? You got. I'm not getting in your way. You'll, right. you'll run me over. Hey. Go, Chelsea. Go. Oh, there's a sign. Streamside North. Yep. Right. Round in the corner and heading to yeah, north. North. I guess that makes sense. Oh, I see why you're so excited. Do you see it now, Steve? I do. Do you guys see the sign? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure they see the sign. <laughs> Chelsea's going to make sure you see it. That is why I'm so excited. I'm a big bird nerd. So you are a self-described bird nerd. I am a self-described bird nerd. Not a bad, that's, it's okay to say the yeah, nerd, is that science-y? Yeah, you can call me a nerd. <laughs> Bird nerd. There you go. I'm okay with that. All right, so Streamside entrance. This is Streamside North. This is the upper building. And that door's locked. Let's go in this one. Whew. All right. It's a little chilly today, December 16th. Where'd she go? There. Look at that. All right, Chelsea, what kind of flying mechanism is that? And a flying mechanism? That is a barred owl, Steve. A barred owl. They get their names from the stripes or bars on their chest? Yes. And a lot of people get confused because it sounds a lot like barn yeah, owl. Yeah, And they, most people don't realize that barred owls exist because they just, the names sound so similar. Got you. So barred owl and not so the barring, the B-A-R-R, -R, I assume, B-A-R-I-N-G. Absolutely. And they're one of my favorite owls. They're just so pretty. Oh, yeah? I know one thing about barred owls. They make a really unique call. Absolutely. You want to you 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 demonstrate the call for our guests? I will do my best, but I do not speak fluent barred owl. Well, last time somebody called back at you. So let's see what you got. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? Oh, that's the call of the barred owl. She's looking at me like I'm crazy. I might have offended her. I wonder what she said. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure she knows. <laughs> so this is one of our raptors, one of our birds of prey of North Carolina. Amazing hunters use those very powerful talons to catch their prey. But the eyesight and the hearing are exquisite on these birds. It's my favorite thing about owls in general. It's just their eyesight and... Oh, it's crazy. They can fly silently. They're, yep, and their ears they have amazing hearing. If you can see, I don't know if I can point around. Let's see if I can do this. But you can mm. do it. There you go. There's your finger. So there's my finger. So you can see the parentheses around the ears. Can you see those parentheses around the ears? Or facial discs. Oh, good call. Fancy science word. So those parentheses are kind of where the ears are. So there's no opening like you, and there's no, no, no ear like you and I have. This outside thing on us is called a pinna. Though all those feathers help capture and catch sound for the barred owl, directing it into the ear, the hole, the opening that they hear with. She is just standing stock still. Of course, you say that and she's going to move her head and, move and blink a little bit. Mice, um, rodents, primary food for the barred owl. Just stunning animals. Absolutely beautiful. And they're so quiet. And oftentimes missed here at Streamside North because people come in and they kind of go off to the left. 
This, this bird is right here when you come in on the right-hand side. And sometimes you've got to look a little bit for her. Chelsea and I were lucky this time. She's right in the middle of the habitat. I think she knew we were coming. I think so. But she has that excellent camouflage, so she might be hiding something. She does have excellent camouflage. Let's and here's see. an example of the skull. I'll pull that down. Where's the best place for me to stand, Chelsea? Oh, you're good right there. Is that good right there? Yeah. You can see how big those eyes are. Digital friends, do me a favor. You can do something an owl cannot do. Keep your head still and look up. Oh, quit cheating. Keep your head still and look to the left. Look to your right and look up again. You can do that because you have muscles attached to your eyes to help you move your eyes. But look at these sockets. On the barred owl. Can you see that socket right there? Chelsea, can they yeah, see that? It's a crazy, that's one of my favorite things about their skulls. Is it doesn't even look real to me. No. Because of those sockets. The eyes are stuck in there. They can't move, guys. Where you and I have muscles attached to our eyes, the owl doesn't have those. And because they don't have those, they have to turn their heads to find their prey. Can they go in a complete circle? What do you think, digital friends? Can they go in a complete circle? Is the owl giving the answer? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they cannot. If their head could go around in a complete circle, it would spin off like the top of a peanut butter jar. Not exactly a good adaptation to have. Wouldn't be good. But then go about 270 degrees. What does that mean? If you look at a clock, they can go from like 12 o'clock to 3, 6, 9, or the other way, 12 o'clock, 9, 6, 3. But those last couple hours they can't do. So 270 degrees, almost a complete circle, but not quite. Almost, but not quite. And they have a really cool adaptation in their neck that allows them to do that. How many, I'm going to carry this with me, how many bones, friends, do you have in your neck? How many <clears throat> cervical vertebrae, Whoa. right? We're taking out the big words today. I found the dictionary. How many cervical or neck vertebrae do you have? Small hint. Big hint. Same number as a giraffe. Do you know? It's seven. You have seven. Chelsea has seven. I have seven. Bones in our neck. We can go shoulder to shoulder. Shoulder to shoulder. Keeping everything still. Owls. Fourteen. Their neck is this big. But fourteen bones help them articulate or turn that head. That much better. Again, almost a full circle, but not quite. And you can see the barred owl in Streamside North. Again, this is a taped episode, giving you a little tour of Streamside today. We thought it'd be fun. This is the middle of December, December 16th. The buildings are closed right now due to COVID. Oh, she's going to Oh, she is turning her head a little bit. She's like, but I'm not going to do it fast. <laughs> so that was, I mean, that's amazing. They're crazy cool critters. Our next animal, and we're going to see some of the reptiles now. Our next animal is hidden. It is ridiculously well hidden. As a matter of fact, I couldn't find it earlier. See if you can find it in this habitat. See if you can find the animal in this habitat. Don't give it away, Chelsea. I'll do my best. Do, do, do. Can you find it? It's a snake. It's a venomous snake and a very small venomous snake. I'll give you a hint. Chelsea will give you a hint. It looks like a pine cone. Chelsea's going to fall into the habitat. <laughs> going to fall in. 
Now can you see it? Now can you see it? How cool is that? That's a pygmy rattlesnake. Can you see the head? It's facing away from you. There you go. The pygmy rattlesnake found in the southeastern parts of North Carolina. Look at that amazing camouflage, everybody. The pygmy rattlesnake, one of a handful of venomous snakes found in North Carolina. And there are two there. So there's, there's the one on top with the head, and then there's another head kind of towards the back. And they are a small rattlesnake. They have a tiny little rattle. And when they're rattling their rattle, it almost sounds more like a buzz or a hum. They are venomous, but not potent enough to hurt you and I. Now, it's not going to feel good to get bitten by one of these guys. It is still a venom. Oh, somebody just gave away their, move, their location. Moved and stuck their tongue out. But if you compare this animal with our next animal at Streamside who gets, to, in my opinion, a really bad rap, but I think they are gorgeous. Chelsea, what do you think? I think they're just beautiful. They are stunning. And there's kind of two different color phases of these guys, sort of. This is the copperhead. Look at that beautiful coloration, guys, seriously. They're stunning. And you can see where he gets the name copperhead. A little bit of a different color on top of the head there. A couple of different color phases I mentioned. You have a very light phase like this. And you have one that's a little darker as well. But if you're curious, if you look close at the triangles, it looks like little, small Hershey's Kisses. And that's one of the ways you can tell the copperhead from some other animals out there. Is that those banding patterns those hourglass-like looking patterns, they have what looks like Hershey's Kisses on their side, on the dark side of it. Very good at blending in with the dead leaves. Oh, if you put some, actually, absolutely, Chelsea, if you put some dead leaves in there, she dis, this animal will disappear. It is such good, and that broken up color, that broken up camouflage, that broken up patterns, Although very obvious right now, well just, she just disappears. Or it just disappears. I don't know why a copperhead is a female to me all of a sudden. They are venomous. That's how they capture their prey. and mobilizes it so they can digest. It helps with digestion so they can eat their food. A bite from a copperhead, it's not a pleasant experience, but it's going to swell up a little bit. It's going to hurt. Um, but more than likely, you won't suffer any serious consequences from the copperhead. There are exceptions. You can be allergic, for example. You can get a big dose. I think one of the cool things about copperheads is when they're babies. Chelsea, you know what color their tail is? Like a bright yellowy green color. Yeah. It's the first time I ever heard the word chartreuse. Huh. Right? I mean, I know it's, the word, but I don't know the color well It's that kind of a really bright, vibrant, greenish yellow. And it's almost like a lure. So they'll wiggle that tail, kind of like the snapping turtle we met a long time ago. The alligator snapping turtle has the tongue-like lure. Wiggles that lure. It looks like a worm. Fish come in. Snap! Well, the baby copperheads do the same thing. They wiggle that tail lure, luring small animals over, and they're able to hunt them. Larger copperheads like this, they don't need to worry about that. They rely on their camouflage. They're an ambush predator. They wait for prey to come to them. Kind of like our next animal. Right next door to the copperhead is the other large, large venomous snake. These guys are really big. The largest snake in North Carolina. Kind of a little bit of a battle in size. Rat snakes can get big, but this is the diamondback rattlesnake. That's an awesome shot, Chelsea. People say a lot of times you can tell a venomous snake by the shape of its head. 
Chelsea's showing you that right there, that a lot of venomous snakes do have that triangle-shaped head. Fantastic, Chelsea. And you can see that right here. If you look behind the eyes, it looks like a triangle. And in that triangle, in the two, in the two back points of the triangle, that's where the venom glands live. So that's why they have a triangle-shaped head. Dot, dot, dot. That's why most venomous snakes have a triangle-shaped head. The copperhead's head is there, but it's not as easy to see. The coral snake does not have a triangle-shaped head. But this big diamondback and the timber rattlesnake both have those very distinct triangle-shaped heads. He lifted his nose just a little bit. And I was like, hey, you want to do something for us? And this, these two snakes doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Maybe they were just eating, maybe they've just eaten recently. This is what they do. They hunt, they, they hunt, they succeed hunting, they eat, and they chill. The rattle that you hear, guys, you know what that's for. It's a warning. Don't come any closer. I'm dangerous. I'm threatening you with my rattle. It's a warning to you to not get any closer. So don't get closer. <laughs> <laughs> potent, potent venom. This is an animal that can do some damage to people, humans, if they were to bite you. But they give you plenty of notice. They give you the rattle. They even try to get away before they strike. If you're out in the woods looking for stuff, I don't have an example. But if you're out in the woods looking for something and you come across a tree or a piece of wood or a rock and you want to look underneath of it, do you remember how to do that safely? Remember how to do that safely? Personally, I think I would tap on the top of the... Let them know you're coming. Let Here I am. Knock. It's polite, right? It is. It's, you're knocking. You knock Here on the door. <laughs> but when you lift it up, when you lift whatever that item is up, if you lift it up this way, I wish I had something in front of me. If I lift it up, if I lift it up like this to look underneath, it's whatever's underneath has got to come this way to get me. So don't lift it up this way. Don't lift it this way. Lift it this way, and then look under. So that way, if somebody wants to get away, it can get away and get Chelsea instead because Chelsea's over there. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> well, you know, hey. You see the difference? Don't do this. Don't lift the rock up or the tree branch, or if you're at home, maybe you have a piece of metal flashing or a piece of plywood. If I go like this, the animal, if it wants to get away, has to come towards me to get away. Go like this, to keep this barrier between you and the animal. Does that help you? Can you guys see that okay? I think that makes sense. So go this way to keep a barrier between you and the animal. Don't go like this so the animal has to come out this way. Don't do that. Cool. They're so pretty. A couple more animals to see. Come on over this way. All this is in Streamside North. This is a taped episode of Streamside. We thought we'd take you guys on a tour since the building is closed and since not everybody likes to come out in the middle of winter. We thought, you know what, we'll take you on a tour. And this is an animal a lot of people like to see. They enjoy seeing this animal. Not Can you get it? Not the greatest shot. Not the greatest shot? The glass is a little bit dirty. Oh, well. well but he's going to move for us. He's going to let us know he's there. Well, what is it? I can't even see what it is. He's a box turtle, Steve. <gasps> this is the box turtle? It's a box turtle. Oh, sweet. Box turtle, Eastern Box Turtle State Reptile of North Carolina. Woo -woo. Called a box turtle because they can literally close up into a box. Can you see that okay? Get it, put it in the... So there's no animal inside this one. But they actually close up all the way into a box. So if the animal was there, that's what you'd see. There's a hinge down here. Remember, you guys, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Leslie talked talk to us a little bit about turtles, about box turtles, about animals that are dealing with winter, how these guys hibernate. But they close up into that box, pull their arms and their legs, their head and their tail 
all up in there. And the shell, by the way, is actually made of bone. Can you see that light color? Yeah, Probably come right down there. there. That white color is bone. And it's actually the backbone and ribs, kind of a, a mishmash of the two, making up the shell of the turtle. And the color that you see, those are scales. Those are modified scales. Fancy science word. Chelsea, you know the fancy science word for the modified scales of a turtle shell? The scoot. Scoot. S-C-U-T-E. So those scales that you see are modified. Those scales are scoots. Called that just on the shell of a turtle. Really cool animals. Later on in the spring, you begin to see those guys crossing the roads. Don't, if you get a chance to save them, don't kind of just save them willy-nilly. Do us a favor and put them across a stop very safe. And if you decide to do it, take them across the road the direction that they're facing. The direction that they're facing. There's something over there they want. Maybe it's water, maybe it's nesting sites, maybe it's food, maybe it's a mate. The range of a box turtle is only about a, about a football field square, up to about a mile square. Not very big. Not very big. So that is home. So if you've seen one, and two or three years later, you might, two or three years later, you might see another one. Not another one. Probably the same one. They live 20, 40, 60, 80 years in that one habitat, that one range, about a square football field up to a square mile in size. That's it. Cool. Box turtles. Who's next? Look at the sign. Who's next? We looked earlier and weren't able to find them. While we continue to look, I want to tell you one really cool thing about... Oh, there's a black snake. Do you see a black snake? I do see a black snake. One cool thing about copperheads is that scientists are studying their venom for breast cancer research. They're finding uses for it in breast cancer research. How cool is that? Copperhead. Who would have thought the venom of a copperhead could be used in breast cancer research? Reduction. I see two black rat snakes. I know, the one moved his head. Now. Yes, he did. <laughs> Can you guys see the two black rat snakes in there? Glass is a little bit dirty. But... I, say, I shouldn't say black rat snake. That's, that's actually not correct anymore. They're <laughs> eastern rat snakes. But I, I think it, it's still, in a way, fine to say, like, at least, like, eastern black rat snakes, because there are yellow rat snakes there that are. are still eastern rat snakes. Well, that's very true. So, I think this So, it's the black eastern rat snake. <laughs> so, names are kind of tweaking and changing a lot sometimes. It's nice to be able to bring that to you, too. So, this is a relatively new name change. The eastern rat snake, as Chelsea just so eloquently told us, they do come in a variety of colors. They can actually be red, too. Do you know that? The corn snake. Have you seen a corn snake before? I do. I love corn snakes. They're a type of rat snake. But they're like a red rat snake. So just another cut, another name. So eastern rat snakes come in a variety of colors. You can tell an eastern rat snake by looking at its chin. There's also a black racer. And they're almost all black. They don't get nearly as large as an eastern rat snake. These guys can get six feet long, seven feet long. Racers, not quite. They're not quite as robust, not quite as thickly built either. But if you look at the chin, that whitish color on the chin, dead giveaway for an eastern rat snake. I wonder what the eastern rat snake might eat. Hmm, that's a tough question. Eastern they, they rat They're frogs, snakes. right? They eat easterns. Easterns. The Easterns. Easterners. The Easterners. <laughs> <laughs> Eastern. <in> <laughs> That's true. They're going to eat rats, small rodents. So those of you that don't like snakes, I understand that people are not real keen on these guys. 
But I have to give a little shout out for these guys. They get a bad rap. Precious few of these snakes are dangerous, per se. Very few are venomous. Most of them perform a really important service. They're eating rodents. They're eating mice, rats, squirrels. Oh, big, big yawn. Big yawn. Oh, that was awesome. Wow, how did you do that? Nice catch. You can Nice. We have to thank, we'll have to thank Keeper Adrian for setting it up for us. I don't know what he did, but that worked. <laughs> How cool is that, guys? How about a smile or a thumbs up? I don't want to see any angry faces. I feel like there's <laughs> going to be a lot of wows for that one. We'll take a wow face. Wow faces will be good. <laughs> <laughs> but if we come back to what they're eating, they're eating animals that you and I can get diseases from. We can't catch a disease from the snake. But the rats and the mice carry diseases. The rats and the mice carry ticks. The eastern rat snake, when he eats the rat or the mouse, also eats the ticks. How important is that? The mice, the rats, are eating the corn that the farmers are growing to feed you and me and livestock. The rats are being eaten by these guys. The mice are being eaten by these guys. So having them around is actually keeping your house safe. So next time you see one, it's okay to walk the other way, but let them be. They're performing a really important service to us. Rat snakes. Eastern fence lizards are next. Tiny little guys. They're cool. See them on the rock up there? You may have seen these in your house. Oh, there's one up. Can, Chelsea, how good? Can you get up there? I right, got up there. Crazy good climbers, apparently. Hunting, 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 listen to me. Hunting small uh, insects and invertebrates. Invertebrates, when we say that, guys, animals without backbones. Probably should, I should probably make sure I define that every once in a while. Invertebrates don't have backbones. So your insects, your worms, your grubs, scorpions, for example, are invertebrates, no backbone, where the eastern fence lizard has a backbone. These eating animals don't have one. Pretty good camouflage. Oh, <laughs> I, see the, I see the yellow rat snake. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone past that habitat, but there's, an eastern rat, there's a yellow rat snake up there. The yellow one or the, or the pine snake? Or is that the pine snake? snake? I think that might be the pine snake. Is it the pine snake? Can I see from over here? I bet you're right. Yeah, I can see it on this side. I think you're right, Chelsea. I think it's the pine snake. They're one of my favorites, too. I can't see much. I'm going to see if I can find a cotton mouth. Cotton mouth, bright white mouth. Oftentimes you see them associated with water, just like this habitat is. This is another animal that gets a bad rap. They're always talking about the cotton mouth is dangerous. Well, yeah, sure, it's dangerous. It's venomous. He's up on the rock up there. He is up on the rock, still near the water. But this is another animal that's actually pretty shy. People say they chase you. No, they don't chase you. Their hole might be behind you. They're trying to get under, trying to get away too. They're fish eaters primarily. I've had a lot of people tell me that any snake in the water is a cottonmouth as well, and that's not always true. No, not at all, Chelsea. Thanks for saying that. There are a lot of water snakes, banded water snakes, northern water snakes, and they look similar. Is there one back here, Chelsea? Can you see with your camera and your eyes back behind that look? There might be. Are those scales? Water's a little... The glass is a little dirty, so it's, it's a little to vibrating too. I can't yeah. Really <laughs> but these guys have that bright white mouth. Again, they don't want to bite you. They want to scare you with that bright white mouth. Don't come any closer. They curl up into a into a coil. They raise their head up in the middle and they open their bright white mouth. They don't want to bite you. They don't want to waste that venom 
on you. You're too big to eat. No offense to any of you, but you're too big to eat. So that would be a defensive strike, not offensive. Get away from me. They can control the release of venom as they get older, so they can actually give a dry bite, but still their fangs are long. Wouldn't be a pleasant experience. Give them the birth, give them the distance they deserve. The last animal on the stream side, right here, look at this little fellow. You are adorable. Did I have to say that? Dustin, Dustin Smith would not be happy if I said that out loud. But they are. They are, aren't they? These are spotted turtles. A beautiful coloration on them. Awesome spots. Oh, I see three at least. Another one over here. Aquatic turtles, freshwater turtles. As you can see, spend a lot of time underwater. They don't, they don't need to come up for breath very often. They'll come up once in a while. These guys are in Streamside North, so if you want to come see them, once the Streamside buildings are open, these guys are in the furthest building away. And as you can see, coming out to say hi, the spotted turtles. <laughs> and I think, based on behavior, that they want the attention. <laughs> want to see what's going on, see how things are. I think they miss seeing people's faces. They miss seeing people's They can't even see our faces. <laughs> our I guess eyeballs. I can see mine a little bit. Our eyeballs, is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's come up for a breath since we've been here. Oh, nope. Uh, aquatic invertebrates, maybe a few plant must, maybe you might munch on a plant or two here and there. It's kind of hard thinking of a cute lamb like this being a hunter. But they sure will. Got to go take a breath? Maybe? There yeah, there you go. A little breath. A little yawn. I got lucky today. I saw, saw a couple open mouth behaviors. Well, it's kind of hard to beat finishing up on a spotted turtle, huh? I think so. Good deal. There's one other animal associated with Streamside um, that we're going to be doing a live with sometime in January. So we're not going to go outside. Um, we also heard today is a really weird weather day. It's very cold. It's very rainy. So the bobcat has access to being indoors. And we talked to Keeper Adrian earlier, and he said, yeah, she's spending a lot of time inside today. So we'll just save her for our next live adventure. So I hope you've enjoyed today's adventure. Chelsea and I taking you through the stream side habitats. Just on a little tour, show you who's who, show you where's what, what's what. And open the zoo up to you guys who aren't, be able to, aren't able to make it. Choose not to come because you're not exactly cold weather people yourselves, which is okay. But we thought, you know what? Let's take them on a tour. I hope you enjoyed today. Do stay safe while you're out and about. Um, the zoo is open. Uh, at this time, still time tickets, still limited total capacity. So make sure you make those online reservations before headed out. Thank you guys for answering the questions. I know I had people back here answering questions. I should have said it earlier. I apologize for that. Thank you so much for answering your questions. If you're looking for activities and things, the Adventures in Ed Zoocation page is still up. If you haven't been there in a while, check it out. Sign up for the group. Really neat activities. Some really cool stuff on that page. Adventures in Ed Zoocation. It's a Facebook group at the North Carolina Zoo's Facebook page. So... Thank you. Have a great day. Stay safe. Hope to see you again soon. Your Zoo Adventures team, Mondays and Wednesdays. Steve's in front of the camera. Chelsea's behind. Have a great day, everybody. And we'll see you guys again soon. Bye, everybody.